This is a video to help with the velocity in a moving frame conceptual question on the homework. I'm not going to answer that question directly. I'm going to answer an analogous question or an analogous situation. And if you can understand this, you will be able to answer the homework problem uh, in a similar fashion. This is a description of an airplane pilot trying to fly an aircraft from Chicago to Cleveland. It's separated by 300 miles and the plane leaves Chicago and tries to fly to Cleveland and it, the plane can travel 500 miles an hour so the velocity of the plane is equal to 500 miles per hour through the air. I think in your problem you have a rowboat paddling through water. The point is it has the ability to move. In this case the pilot flies straight towards Cleveland which he thinks is due east. There's northeast, and he's correct. Cleveland is due east of Chicago. So here's the pilot. His velocity vector is 500 miles per hour. This is the velocity of the plane through the air. He can go 500 miles per hour. He forgot to check the weather and doesn't know that there's a wind. A wind is blowing south at 100 miles per hour. So the question is, this is the velocity of the wind. Velocity of the wind. And I think you might have a situation where your, your boat is traveling in a cross current, in a river. And the first part of this question is, what is the plane's velocity relative to the ground? Well, if the plane is traveling this way, and, and another velocity is added to the plane, blowing him southwards, the resultant velocity is going to be the addition of both of those. So this velocity result, so I'm going to say the resultant velocity is equal to the velocity of the plane going through the air plus the velocity of the wind or the velocity of the air that he's in. And if this is a vector equation, these don't just simply add up. You don't simply say 500 plus 100 equals 600. This does not equal just 600. Because this is 500 miles per hour east, and this is 100 miles per hour south. But notice vectors, one vector added to another, tail to tip, results in a third vector. And we can analyze the, the magnitude of this vector using geometry. So if we make it simple, strip away all of the physics details, we can still see that the velocities are related in a proportional way to a simple triangle, which people have analyzed in high school algebra with one side being one 500, the other side being 100, there being uh, a, a hypotenuse that they don't know, and uh, we want to know this, this hypotenuse. Well, that we can use Pythagoras' theorem for. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And if we wanted to know the angle, 
say this angle theta that he drifted off course, uh, we could also use, this is the, if this is angle theta, the, the side opposite of it is this side. That's the opposite, that's the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent side. So to find this hypotenuse, or the resultant velocity here, uh, I'm going to say uh, 500 squared plus 100 squared is equal to c squared. And I guess that's c, that's c, my c squared as well. Uh, therefore, c is equal to the 500 squared plus 100 squared. And if you push that through a calculator, you can see that the velocity is 500 and or th that uh, this side using geometry. I guess my labels are a little complicated, but uh, there's labels for this triangle A, B, and C in terms of A. Uh, uh, Pythagoras theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared and there's also I can call this the adjacent side the opposite side and the hypotenuse so there's multiple labels but the point is using simple geometry rules you if this uh, if this side of a triangle is 500 units well, actually there's no units in math if this is 500 and this is length 100 this length is 510 Notice that's interesting. That's not much more than 500, yet it simultaneously can move 510 horizontally and 100 vertically, and yet being only 510 itself. So if we translate this geometric argument back up into vectors, we can see that the, the resultant velocity the resultant uh, the resultant velocity is equal to 510, and now we reintroduce the units, miles per hour. And we don't know the direction yet. We can find out using geometry as well. We have an angle here, theta, uh, and we can relate it to the values that we have. How about, this is the adjacent, uh, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, we can say tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent uh, and opposite over adjacent is equal to 100 over 500 which is equal to one-fifth we can use an inverse tan relationship theta is equal to inverse tan some people say arc tan of one-fifth that's inverse tangent on your calculator, and if you punch that through your calculator, uh, that's about 11 degrees. So, an airplane traveling directly east at 500 miles an hour when there's a 100 miles per hour crosswind will end up traveling at 510 miles an hour at 11 degrees 11. south of east. Notice that's very precise language. 11 degrees south of east. Okay, and together with magnitude and direction, that's a vector. All right, with, with that approach, uh, you should be able to solve that first problem on the homework, that early problem on the homework.